joining us in the studio to talk more on the level of compliance and other issues when it comes to transportation is the manager Latsema or Lajide Odoyoye. Thank Last, you very much for Lasma. joining us. Lastma. 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 Lagos State Traffic Management Authority. You're welcome. Thank you for joining us in the studio. Okay. Um, what is the general level of compliance with the regulations put out by uh, motorists in Lagos? Well, um, from even the video clip that was shown, um, you would see there's a major struggle in terms of compliance. Um, when the whole issue of COVID came up and the, the restrictions came on board, everyone was kind of like following the rules. There was a lot of fear factor. There was a lot of um, figures being followed up internationally to see how the figures are rising. On the other side of it, the figures in Nigeria was kind of low. And that was going on, the coffee was there, everyone was kind of adhering. And then after a while, you suddenly just find people just got fed up, perhaps, of staying at home for economic situations, I would imagine. And then suddenly, people started coming up with stories like, oh, there's no COVID-19 in Nigeria. There's no COVID-19 in a particular state. The government is just lying to the public and everything. Why are you forcing us to wear face masks and everything? And gradually, gradually, on every single day, you found a numbers oh. going down, numbers going down. And it was more um, pronounced when you now find public bus transportation passengers that are so close to each other. I mean, it's different when you're walking around the place, but the areas where it was well noted, in the markets, areas where there are lots of people, public transportation thing, and then you just find people just putting it on for the sake of putting it on. They won't cover their nose. Some would even be wearing three-day-old face masks, very dirty. So how, how, do you, how do you ensure compliance? Because it's, uh, it seems like a Herculean task as it is. It is an Herculean task, and there is um, nothing called ensure in the Nigerian system. You can only have the authority to do things. And even that is under question by even the people you're trying to protect. So right now in Lagos, um, uh, an enforcement committee was set up. And in the committee, you have members from LASMA, you have from the VIH, that's a vehicle inspection service, you have Neighborhood Watch, you have the park service. And we were just mandated that go all over the place where people are congregating, especially from a transportation point of view, where they're loading at parks, go and educate them, go and cajole them that, listen, it's for the safety and benefit of all citizens. Not, it's not an individual, individual thing. And so the whole idea is to go out there and tell people there's a chaos, there's a, there's a medical chaos in the land. This COVID-19 is real, right? People are dying all over the place. The fact that the figures in Nigeria is not that high compared to other countries doesn't mean that it's not here. And so if we are blessed that the numbers are low, we should not be playing games just to see, to test whether really we are immune. And of course we are not, right? And so the mandate for the enforcement agencies is to go everywhere you can. When you see people not wearing masks, you make sure, you tell them to wear the masks, and if they're in the vehicles and they're being stubborn, then you effect an arrest right, so that we can learn. Enforcement and arrest is just... You, you just answered the part of the question I was yes. going to ask about. There must be some measure of punishment so Absolutely. people understand the importance. There must be consequences. Okay, what about, in, in that news report by Mary Chinda, there, there, there was um, um, somebody, we, one of those people we tend to call Agberos, yes. jumping on the vehicle, trying to help enforce compliance on the use of face masks and all of that. Uh, what are the likely risks to that? Because there could be accidents, there could be something else. How are you managing such situation well, did you give for instance maybe give some clearance to some of these people to do that um, no I mean they are just doing it from an enforcement point of view because if they don't do that then when they go on the road and a last mile any of the enforcement agency officers stops them they will pay the price and so it's in their own best interest to ensure that their passengers are adhering to the rules. And you know, some passengers can be very, very stubborn and not want to follow things. Some people tell you, oh, I can't breathe properly. It's very inconvenient yes, for me and all sorts of different things. But then you'll not find people are using Ashoki for face masks. How are you going to breathe with Ashoki? Maybe they will just want to copy Mr. Governor, who is a fashionable governor. And that was just a one off. You don't see the governor wearing Ashoke face mask every single day because the material doesn't allow um, 
oxygen and carbon dioxide for you to breathe properly. And so people are doing all sorts of different things. They say, oh, I can't breathe properly. So why are you not wearing a proper one that would allow you to breathe? We keep on losing the purpose of the mask. It is not a government directive that they want to punish the citizens. So We're just saying, safety. listen, you have a right to be alive the same way I have a right to be alive. So if you're taking a risk and the risk can affect me, something needs to be done about it. All right, let's talk about the um, guidance on the use of um, washing liquids as bus stops and all of that. I mean, we don't see bus stops with hand washing facilities across the state, and you know how the buses operate here um, in, in Lagos. What other measures, aside from monitoring, can you use to encourage people to use the hand washing facilities and the use of hand sanitizers where they don't have that? I was just going to say that, like, your safety and your health it's really your own personal primary responsibility. The government can give guidance, the government can enforce, the government can do a whole lot of things. But if you, as an individual, you're not interested in your well-being, then there's a big problem. And that is why you should have your own sanitizer. You're going into a public place. You you're intend to join a bus that other individuals for hours before you have been going in and out. You cannot determine what sort of hygienic methodology they adopted for themselves. But you can protect yourself by having your sanitizer. And that is what we're saying. It, you see, we should not be in an environment that the only reason, the only time when we do the right thing is when someone is enforcing it. I think that is totally wrong. We are adults, we are, we are asked to open the schools are closed, so you would assume that there's a level of maturity and age of those that are actually on the roads right now. We're not talking about children going to school. And so why do you need a last more officer to come and enforce a hygienic situation for you. Why are you not having your sanitizer with you? So when you get on the bus, you wipe your hands. So whatever it is you touch, at least you protect yourself to a certain degree. The, the distance between the way the sitting process is in a, in a downfall bus is just not ideal. But that is where we are. That is what we've so allowed them to you're, do. So you're, you're emphasizing the need for personal responsibility when it comes Absolutely. to the issue of Absolutely. Absolutely. We should not really be talking about the enforcement. We should be talking about ourselves. What are we doing as an individual to ensure that we are safe? Food for thought for us. Thank mm -hmm. you very much for coming on the news. You're welcome.